so we want to put this into practice. How can we become spirit hackers? Well, there's a lot of different things you can do in spirit hacking. One of the techniques you can use is calibrating your INS, which is basically your internal navigation system. Um, do you want to experience it? I'm always, yes. I'm always putting yeah. things like no, you I'm to ready. experience. No, I'm ready. I'm ready. Last time we were experiencing like, okay. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to ground yourself. So take a deep inhalation and exhale. Good. And just bring all your air. Good. And then what I want you to do is breathe again and say, show me my yes. Body, show me my yes. Body, show me my yes. So that I can feel it. So that I can feel it. And keep breathing. Okay. And note, what did you feel in that experience with your breath? A sense of peace. Okay, good. Now, take another deep breath. Exhale. And say, body, show me my no so I can feel it. Body, show me my no so I can feel it. And what does that feel like? It feels like a little bit more pressure. Yeah, so you feel the pressure. Yeah. Right. So, so calibrating your INS, really, a lot of times what people do is they make choices in life without really checking in with themselves. They just make choices because the TV tells them to buy something or someone says they have to, you know, to get this or take that. When you learn how to tap into your body through spirit hacking, you learn a different form of awareness. You actually learn that your body is this intelligent technology, this beautiful system that's saying, hey, I'm not just your body. I'm also here to help you live your life and navigate your life. Are we supposed to be as comfortable with the no is the yes, is that what we strive to achieve? Because we're, we're too focused on people pleasing and saying yes. Well, I believe that once you're aware of what is right for you, it's actually right for others. Because you have to remember this. Now, there's a whole idea that if someone jumps in a, uh, is drowning in a pool, right, and you jump in, you should check in first to see if you actually have the strength to save that person out of the pool. Because you see, the wonderful thing about life is that there is someone there who can save that person who has the strength. It may not be you. So if you jump in and you don't have the energy, that's two people now drowning in the pool. So we have to look at how we're actually operating in our lives, and that comes from truth. So if someone is upset by you honoring your truth, well, then that's what they have to understand, that you're not the right person for that situation, and there is someone there for them that will show up. How do you balance out all of the varying things you have to do in life, career, family, um, because some of the stuff you have to do, right? So this is a smart question, Travis. And you know, when you're talking about calibrating your INS, the thing about that is that that's actually connecting into what is not right for you. So if you are actually, you know, a lot of times what people don't realize is that if they're working at a job and they're getting ulcers or they're getting sick or they're having stress all the time, that's really not your job. You know, because if you're doing something, like if you have a child and you don't want to get up in the morning and take care of your child, then why'd you have the child? I mean, let's, that's just common sense in shamanism, right? So the understanding is, is that you're operating the things in your functional life that you have to do, your day and day and stuff that you have to do, that is actually functional in your life. But when it comes to calibrating your INS, it's about things that your, your being is saying, hey, I don't want that. And it's not because of, I don't want to do that. Those are two different things. It's literally, I don't want that. And that's not, that's not what what your, your body is saying is right for you. And when we operate in the field of consciousness, when we bring more awareness in, one of the hacks that we have for bringing more awareness in is called fire scrying. And what it is is that you sit in a room, you put a candle, and you look at the candle, and you focus your attention on the candle with one idea. And what it does, I have a kid right now that I've been training since he was six years old. And he says it keeps him focused in his work. He's able to, to block out all the distractions because the biggest thing that happens to us as human beings is that we're so bombarded with all these distractions and all of these, these aggressive inputs and outputs and all these things that are happening and pay the this and do the that, that we lose focus of what's important. So this hack literally teaches you how to focus and you start at five minutes for like two weeks, 10 minutes for another two weeks, and then you get up to an hour. And if you can focus on something for an hour, think about how determined, how much power, how much inner power, how you'll be able to accomplish things with more you know, precision. And that's really important today because that alleviates stress and you get to live a long and healthier life. I wish you had written a book on this. <laughs> oh wait! <laughs> He did write a book on it. It's called Spirit Hacking. It's available wherever books are sold, and everyone in the audience is going home with a copy. Shaman Durek, thanks so much for being here today.